Hello folks, I had my two main telescopes out last night, the Rasa and the Explorer Scientific Scope, and I finished two more deep space objects. Now when the scopes are done imaging, I have them automatically park, and you can see sometimes my CGX parks in an, sort of an awkward position. I'm not sure why. Now if I know I'm going to have multiple clear nights in a row, I just throw this Orion scope cloaks on my telescopes, and it, it does a good job of protecting my scopes from the elements. I even left my scopes out in the pouring rain, and they weren't harmed at all as long as I was using this scope cloak. Okay, so let me show you my latest two objects that I captured. Okay, it's nighttime again and I have both of my scopes running and you can see the moon is illuminated over 80% right now. So both of my rigs are running narrowband. Okay, so here's the first completed object I wanted to show you. And by the way, I haven't put out a video in two or three weeks because it's, it's that time of the year where allergies come into play and I sound all nasally and congested. So I just took a, a couple of weeks off, two or three weeks off to try and recuperate. But I still don't feel 100%. But anyway, let's get on with this. This is M94, and you might have seen me capturing this in a, a live stream a few weeks ago, but I finally processed what I had. And this is a really cool-looking galaxy, but you can see I'm really struggling right now with, my, with the light pollution. It seems like it's as bad as ever, and the background is really giving me a hard time. But you know what? I'm just having fun that I'm even able to capture this. And this galaxy is only around 16 million light eaters from Earth. That's actually closer than most of the other galaxies I capture. But this galaxy is really cool because it has a bright core, and then it's kind of a spiral galaxy. And then it has uh, a ring here, and a darker area, and then a, another outer ring. It's really unusual looking for a galaxy. So it's, it's, just, it's just a fun target to capture. And this was done with my Celestron Rasa. Okay, so I have this new lamp on top of my monitor, and I think I had it on too bright. My face was shining too much in that previous segment, so I turned it down. So hopefully this looks a little more natural. But here's the second object I finished, and it's the Wizard Nebula, and it was captured with my Explorer Scientific Refractor. It's captured in the, in the Hubble Palette, and I, I always love doing the Hubble Palette. It's just so much fun to see what kind of colors I'm going to come up with. So I like the colors that that came out with, with this picture. But uh, in the past, I probably would have gone 20 to 30 hours on a, a deep sky object with uh, using the Hubble palette. But I cut this one down to about 12 hours because I'm just trying to motor through, like I mentioned in other videos. I want to capture as many things as I can this year. And one more thing about the... Uh, the, the colors here is that I didn't completely get rid of the green. You know, when you're doing the Hubble palette, um, a lot of people, they, they, they will do everything they can, get rid of all the green, get rid of all the magenta. Those, those colors seem to be enemies of a lot of people. But I thought leaving in some green gave it a sort of glow. I don't know. What do you think? I, I can tell there's some green left. And let me show you this uh, in PixInsight. A lot of people will really hack their picture by by using this SCNR and then just doing a complete drop on, on the picture. And you can see how it gets rid of the green completely and just gives me that, that gold and blue, which is, and this is how I see a lot of Wizard Nebulas look with this uh, in just blue and gold. But I don't know, I, I liked leaving the green in there. I thought it, it added something to the picture. What do you think? Hey, one more thing I wanted to show you. I, I mentioned a, a new lamp I had, and it's a little portable thing. It just sits right on top of the, the screen, and it has a lot of different adjustable settings. I found it on Amazon for only 40 bucks, and let me show you. And it, 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 it just uh, works through USB, and you can, you can adjust the settings like that, or lower it. Or just turn it off completely. That's it. Anyway, that's all I got, folks. I'll see you later.